pressure is growing on Europe to secure alternate gas supplies as Russian gas flows to Europe continue to fall for a second day. Russian gas flows to Europe, which usually meets around 40% of the continent's needs, have been constantly observed since the start of the war in Ukraine. But fears that Russia will stop its gas supplies are now becoming real. After Moscow slapped sanctions on Western energy firms and slowed gas flows to Europe. Russia on Thursday said it would stop sending natural gas via the Polish section of the Yamal Europe pipeline in retaliation against Western sanctions on Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. The Yamal Europe pipeline, which usually ships gas from Russia via Belarus and Poland further to Germany, was operating in reverse mode on Thursday, sending gas from Germany to Poland instead. Data from the Gasgate pipeline operator showed Moscow has already cut off supply to Bulgaria and Poland. And if reports are to be believed, Finland has also been warned that Russia could halt its gas supplies. Gas accounts for about 5% of Finland's energy consumption. Now, for more on this, joining us live on this broadcast is our correspondent, Rosie Burchett from Brussels. Hello to you, Rosie. Now, Western sanctions on Russia are having a ripple effect on the gas supply in Europe. What are the options left for European countries with Russia disrupting the gas supply to the continent? They are mulling those options every day. The European Commission, which is headquartered, Alison, in the building behind me, is in the middle of drafting up the details of a major flagship plan to cut dependence on Russian gas by two thirds by the end of this year. Now, this will have a few elements. First of all, diversify, diversifying suppliers. So they're looking elsewhere in the world to replace those gas supplies. For example, we know they've been in talks with countries including Qatar, Norway and Nigeria. And a couple of months ago, they struck a big deal with the United States to ramp up imports of liquefied natural gas from the US. However, Alison, there is an issue there. The EU as a whole simply doesn't have enough infrastructure in place to radically increase imports of LNG overnight. That's, of course, a legacy of this long term dependence on Russian gas, usually transported via pipeline. So we have that, first of all, that diversification of suppliers. But beyond that, they're also looking at trying to really radically increase renewables here in Europe. Uh, the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says every euro invested in renewable, renewables production on the continent is a down payment on future energy independence. But that, Alison, of course, is something that simply won't happen overnight. And Rosie, Russia's Gazprom has announced that it will stop transporting natural gas via the Yamal Europe pipeline that runs through Poland. Apart from this, it has also announced sanctions against 30 energy corporations. What effects will this latest move by the Kremlin have on Europe? Well, listen, I think this latest move has not really sparked the panic you might expect. There was much more talk, for example, when uh, Gazprom, that Russian energy giant, cut off supplies completely to Poland and Bulgaria. And at that time, EU countries were scrambling to find alternative suppliers and started sharing gas among themselves as an emergency measure. Poland and Bulgaria's neighbours are now sharing gas supplies. This particular new measure, so these counter sanctions from Russia, don't impact a huge num a huge percentage of European gas supply, but it does just add to those threats and those concerns more globally. And this comes, Alison, as EU countries try to debate the details of an embargo on Russian oil. The EU Commission has proposed that European countries ban the imports of Russian oil uh, with, by the end of this year. And that's something they simply, Alison, have not been able to agree on. They've been in talks on this particular topic for days already. Oil was seen as something much less contentious than gas when it comes to sanctions from the European Union against Russia over the war in Ukraine. So it's a very difficult time for EU countries in, ter in terms of th them trying to think about how to promote energy 
independence. This is something which the European Commission will present next week, Wednesday. They're going to come forward with a big plan of how to move forward with this, Alison. We do not know if those sanctions on Russian oil will be agreed by then. EU member states do appear to be divided on this front, most notably because Hungary, one country which is highly dependent on Russia for its energy supplies, says those sanctions currently being proposed would be too harmful to its economy. So lots of division and lots of discussion still to be had among EU member states as they try to overall reduce their dependence on Russian fossil fuels. Right, Rosie, thank you very much for bringing us all the latest details on that. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.